Hello! This is my Tiller Time installation video. And it's really going to be confusing because Tiller documentation is very confusing, especially about time placement. The confusion is the right and the left. In documentation, when you are standing behind the machine with your hands on the handle, the left side is the left side and the right side is the right side. But when you're talking about times, this is a right hand time. To you, the viewer, this tine points to the right with the blunt end facing you, the edge that grinds into the dirt facing away from you. This is a left hand tine with the blunt end facing towards you, the blade edge facing away from you. It points to the left. All right. What I'm talking about today is tying installation on a Troy built pony tiller. On a Troy built pony tiller, the tines all face inward towards the machine, all in. To do to accomplish that, the left hand tine goes on the right side of the machine with all pointed ends facing in. The right hand tine goes on the left side of the machine with all tines pointing in. But I'm just going to show you some simple ways to avoid the headache and confusion of the documentation, whether it's Troy Build or an aftermarket or whoever it is. And uh, these tine holders, which tine holders are kind of hard to find, and the reason I got these is because Troy Built was uh, sold out on back order at the time. They may not be now, but uh, I got these from Custom Parts Incorporated in Limestone, Tennessee. The tines I'm using today are the KD standard uh, tines. I got them from Clark's. Oh, Oh, let me get this straight. Clark Farms. They're the big KD. Uh, they're the big KD uh, tying guys. ClarkFarmsSupply.com. ClarkFarmsSupply.com. And these are the standard tines. They have a uh, a hard case where they weld over the edges, uh, tying for more money. Troy built. Uh, used to have the the, the hard and the hard faced tines. I'm I'm not sure that they still do, but anyway, these were just the best I could find. You can find I paid two nineteen for the tine set. That was all of the tines for a pony or a horse tiller. Uh, I paid two nineteen for those. The hard face were significantly more expensive, and the hard face were out of stock at the time. The uh, Tine holders were sixty bucks a piece, which was actually like thirty dollars cheaper than uh, the Troy built ones, which were out of stock. And I thought these were custom made, and they might be, but they look like factory to me. I mean, they really look like factory. So maybe I, I don't know. Maybe they're just selling factory tines. But anyway. To keep from getting confused, first I'm going to set this right hand aside because I'm working with all of these left hand tines right here. All right. Four tines are called a gang on the Troy Built Pony or the Troy Built Horse because you have four tines on the inner tine holder bracket and you have four tines on the outer tine holder bracket. And the best way I've found to avoid the confusion is to take the old tine, 
holder assembly. First check, make sure all your blades, your cutting edge is going the right way, and these all are. All right, just go around the whole thing. Make sure everything matches where the cutting edge is. Then find the innermost, the innermost uh, tine, the one on the bottom that mounts flush to the plate, and lay that one in place. But first of all, before you do any of that, align your mounting holes. Here's the hole right here. So, so that this new tine is in the same orientation with the old tine. I mean, I put a bolt in it so you could easily see it on camera. See, so these are both, so you couldn't be like 90 off on the tine. Now, this one over here is the innermost sitting flush on the bracket. Then, these two tines... Go like that, all right. Let me put a bolt in it just to hold them all in place for a second. And just the instructions say to uh, hand tighten, you know, keep them loose until you have them totally installed. These are a locking type nut that when you uh, torque it down, it'll it'll hold it in place. So you it, you want to do it like a one time. Uh, torquing it all the way instead and that's just they just came up with that to avoid the use of a lock nut you could if you were buying your own bolts or something you could just easily use a lock nut and you'd just be fine but the thing the reason the the reason they say that is so you have everything in the correct position you don't want to get everything all torqued down and then have to realize you have something backwards you have something going the wrong way and what i am talking about on this installation is for the pony tiller there are other tillers that have different tine orientation and direction and that type of thing but i'm just saying this is for the pony tiller and specifically the the Model 5, Model 6, something like that. Okay, now, I'm going to check. These two are up. These two are up. These two are down. These two are down. Now, the instruction from uh, Clark Farm Supply said to assemble both gangs before you do that. But uh, since I'm using a uh, an impact... Well, I was going to use an impact. Hold on. I want to be able to get in this groove that the factory that they use for factory assembly, and this is nine. This is just nine sixteenths. You could do this all with two nine sixteenths wrenches. You know what I'm saying? This is not. You know, you don't need any power tools to do this. But I'm alter. I'm also alternating, like you would on a uh, a, t a wheel on a car. I'm crossing over. And maybe using an impact is not a good idea. But the only reason I the only reason I'm doing it like that is because so I can fit in these notches before I put the final. Okay, now, as I said, this is the left hand tines that will go on the right side. And when it rotates, it rotates like this. And you want to make sure all your cutting edges 
are going to hit the dirt and you're not driving the back of the blunt end into the ground. Now, I got to get back to my orientation. There we go. Two down, two up, two down, two up. These tines facing out, these tines facing out. That looks good to me. Now for the next gang. And I'm just crossing over just because it's easier to do it. I'll slide the one under. And really, this may seem like a lot of money for, uh, you know, I used to just buy whatever old tiller at a garage sale or auction or that type of thing, you know, kill it and get another one. But these days, the tillers are getting hard to find. It's the pandemic food insecurity or whatever. Everybody in the world's tilling up their backyard, trying to save money on groceries. And I don't blame them. I think it's a great idea. I think everybody ought to do it. But I'm just telling you, if you look at the prices of tillers, the, the pony... The, and this is the, the Home Depot price. The, 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 the current Troy Bit Pony is 1500 bucks. So I'm putting basically 500 bucks in this, not in this, specifically in a whole rebuild of my old, uh, my old pony. Because it's actually been my favorite tiller I've ever had, and I've had a bunch of tillers. I, I, I have quite a large garden and do other, and do other gardens, but... Okay, now, there's my hole, there's my hole, these two are down, flat against the plate of the tine holder, these two are up, and actually, let me, let me go a little less aggressive here to And I may retorque these, I don't know. For purposes of the video, I just didn't want to get stuck with out, of, out the right tool. So, like I said, you could do this with two 9 wrenches. These are 3 8 bolts. Uh, I actually think they're grade 5. Yeah, these are grade 5. On the, the, the bolt that goes through the tine holder into your shaft, you want that to be a grade 8. Uh, bolt the Troy belt calls for I think the two inch but I'm actually going to go a little longer to get the shank of the bolt to go completely through the shaft because of the shaft where I just replaced the shaft on the tiller I did the shaft the bearing the seals and that's what prompted me to, to do new tines and before we get all the way through this video how you know when you need new tines is when the ends get pointy like this see how pointy this tine is that tine needs to be replaced because when it gets pointy like that it's shortening and it won't cut as effectively now this outside one right here this is in much better shape and actually you really this this one still has a little life in it that one not so much this one's okay that one's about done you see what I'm saying there's variables, but uh, these were close enough that I'm. It's time I'm putting the money. Since I put the money in the shaft, I'm doing new tine holders. Since I'm doing new tine holders, I'm doing new tines. That's all it is to it. And I'm just saying, tillers, you know, they're they're just worth more than they used to be. Really, it's you know, they're. Uh, it's good to have a good tiller. And this is a DeWalt 20 volt uh, electric impact ratchet. I could I could hit my uh, well. I could use air. I've got all kinds of air tools, but uh, I could use other impact tools with have a higher torque. But I thought this would be fine for this one. Now 
This goes on the right side of the tiller. It has left hand tines and the rotation is like this. All right, that's the new one. Here's the old one. Now, as thrilling as that was, I'm sure you will just be even more impressed with the right hand side, or the, excuse me, the, see this is why it's so confusing, that's why I'm making this video. Orientation of the hole that goes through the tiller, the tine holder. You want to line up the holes in the same direction. Match the right hand tines. They go on the left side of the tiller. Oops, see, see? It's easy to get confused. And if you're doing this, if you're doing this, uh, if you're not replacing the tine holders, if you're doing this on an, uh, you know, uh, take off one gang at a time. You might even want to take a, you might even want to take a picture of it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, with your, with your, with your phone, just to, just to make sure you don't get confused on the placement of the tines. Because there is, I mean, it's it's not hugely significant like in other applications, but there's a balance. There's a balance to all this. There's a placement to it on 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 what how the tines interact with each other. But really, I I mean, it seems like a lot of money for a 1991. Troy Bell Pony, but I'm telling you, that's 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 one of my favorite tillers, and I've had a bunch of tillers. That's my favorite tiller I've ever had, and I have another pony that you know I that needs rebuilt that I just never even mess with. I just always use this one, and maybe after this, I'll I'll put some money into that one for a backup. And one thing about the all in. Uh, Tine design of the pony, it makes it really good for cultivation. If you're if you're running down if you're a row cropper, you know I, which I am. If you're if you're running down the rows, and my wrench. Is a vintage Thornson, Thornson, uh, back when Thornson was owned by Elgin uh, in the 80s. They were really a good quality wrench. I mean, a lot of Thornson stuff is just garbage, but certain years they made really good stuff. I found out years ago they're they're stronger than craft. You know, back when craftsmen were craftsmen. Yep, they're strong. And here's a craftsman. Here's a, just a comparison the Thor, Thorson and the craftsman. Although I must say the current Taiwanese uh, craftsman sockets are, and ratchets are much better than the old uh, the, than the China than the previous Chinese versions, which were just garbage. Okay, here's my two down on the plate. My two down on the plate, two up, two up. And this may seem 
completely redundant the way I'm doing it, but just if you just with the confusion of reading the manuals, and I'm talking Troy built or I could easily see somebody screwing this up. And for other different, and for this is all of this is for the pony. Although these tines are the same tines on a horse too. Uh, now the Tuffy, the Bronco, that I'm pretty sure they've got different tines, but the the pony models and the horse models use the same tines, and I'm pretty sure it's all of them. Now the tine holders check your documentation because I'm pretty sure there's different. I, I know the horse and pony are different tine holders, but uh, I think even different pony models, different years. I think the hole in the shaft was in a different place or something. Don't quote me on that. But before you spend the money, check. You know, if you have your original documentation, that's great. But I'm just saying, you know, do a little research before you buy the wrong wrong part. And actually, on a like a garden tiller, I have never changed the tines on anything. Now, on a big tractor tiller, I've changed tines multiple times, many, many times. And I don't want any no-till comments. I don't want to hear it. I do mainly cultivate, like, I do mainly cultivate with wheel hose for, for weeding. And I do need to make some, I do need to make some wheel hose videos, honestly. I'm really into wheel hose. I do have some wheel hose videos, but I haven't haven't done all my wheel hose video series yet. Now hold on, I've totally screwed this up. See, what a good point for the video. I left off the last time. I was trying to. I was all worried about having something to say in the video. It's a good example of how you can screw up. That was pretty obvious, too. And one day, when these lock nuts fail <laughs> on this one side, I'll know, be able to have video evidence of why these bolts came off. And actually, the uh, the damage to my left side tine holder, which is the reason why I'm really doing this, and and probably most of the shaft damage, although the that thing had been leaking for years, it was because at one point in time in the field, I had broken the bolt that holds the tine holder to the shaft, and I had replaced it with a a uh, five sixteenths instead of a three eighths, and forgot about it. That was my totally my fault. But when you're in the field trying to get something done, you think it's just for a little while, and then you don't go back and correct it. It can happen. And I really wanted to make a video uh, of the shaft installation, but it was just too much cursing. 
It was even too much cursing for bit shoot. I had to, you know, I probably should have done better on that. Although, like I said, that one pillar video, it wasn't my finest video. I'm trying to make up for it with a good time video. And I really don't know what the torque should be on these, but this puts out like I think 65 max. So I might actually go torque them a little more at some point. But this I do, I really have liked this. This is the half inch one. Everybody usually gets the three eighths version. But it was on sale, and I just love a sale. And once again, the source, Thorson 916 I-beam type, raised panel wrench, made in the USA, making an appearance in this video. Now, let's get the old one out of the way. Clearly says right, KD70R, R for right. Okay, the right to you goes on the left, the viewer in the video. The, oops, it's the KD70L, which you can't see the left. They stamped the left on the other side, but anyway. The left goes on the right on the pony tiller as you're watching this video. I know that's confusing, but I just thought that this might help if I described it simply and showed you how I came up with doing this to not get confused. And if you do install these on your tiller and the blunt end is driving into the ground, just flip the sides it's easy to get confused. You have a nice day now. Bye-bye. Whoop. -bye.